welcome back this is the 15th video and this is the last one in this historical bike build series and uh, the bike really turned out great uh, you saw on in the intro that intro there uh, was driving it in front of the old plant over on Platt Avenue in Cleveland and that was super cool going over there it was kind of eerie to be honest with you across the street is a cemetery it's really quiet but um, shout out to all those people that came before us and uh, actually made motorcycles, uh, early motorcycles in Cleveland and other places, made Harleys and Indians and all kinds of other early bikes. So when we left off uh, on video number 14, basically got all the uh, rough assembly in. And this bike has two chains. Uh, you know, this is a kit after all, uh, except for all the custom fabrication that was done, but the engine and stuff is a kit. So in order to make it, you know, street legal or what have you, you have to have the pedals on there. So there are two chains, You've got the sprocket on the right hand side, and the regular pedal chain for the bicycle. And then on the other side is the, uh, the larger chain that is the, the drive chain for the engine itself. So if anybody has ever done this before, uh, it's, it's not a lot of fun pushing those little pins out, but uh, there's probably other, other videos on YouTube. Check it out if you want to see how to do that. But it's very similar to put on the drive chain as it is to you know shorten or lengthen uh, a regular chain. Uh, the drive chain is just, just bigger, and it does come with those, those little clips uh, that I just showed you there. So on the drive chain, you want to get it, you know, pretty snug, um, but there is a little tensioner pulley system that comes with the kit that you can use, um, to, you know, take some of that looseness out of there. So, um, you know, usually like one link extra is fine, then you can push it up. Clip. So there's that extra little clip that and link system that comes in there and it's just like a little kind of like a little pac-man looking thing uh, and you literally just click that on the one side and that creates the bond for the link on the chain You know, there is a tool that's made for this. So if you go in the bike shop or something, they have like a little, I don't know, piston type of tool that actually, you know, pushes out the little pins in there and stuff. But I don't have that. So you just use a punch or you could even use a nail or something to uh, get those pins at, out and then uh, take the number of links you want out and then put them back in. So there's that tensioner. Um, pretty simple to install. Just a couple little brackets and nuts and bolts. This front muffler uh, gave me a little bit of a hard time. It was actually too long, and the front of the muffler there where my fingers are uh, was actually rubbing up against the, uh, the tire. So I had to heat, uh, heat it up and bend it back just you know a few degrees so there would be uh, sufficient clearance in there. And I just did that with a couple of um, you know, plumbing propane burners. But most of this stuff either gets assembled just with, with you know regular screws or like Allen wrench types of you know bolts and nuts and stuff. So here's the accelerator, um, the throttle, and this is a kind of a, a neat little system. There's a little pin right inside that ring right there, that donut, and you actually have to drill into the handle. Um, So 
you just do kind of like a dry fit and find out where you want that pin and then you know drill into, into the into the handlebar and then just kind of reassemble it because the handle on that side right there the accelerator accelerator handle that actually just floats and then that little donut kind of um, you know holds all the pieces parts together and also the uh, the wire control that goes all the way back to the carburetor as well goes up in there and kind of links in but that's all held in place by that little hole and the little pin in there uh, and then there's a couple nuts and bolts So the kit does come with a little bit of gas line and then also um, a gas filter. Uh, I did buy an extra little pet cock there. And this is a right angle one um, just because I custom made this gas tank. Um, but it's pretty cheap. I don't know, $3 or something like that off of Amazon. Uh, the kit comes with a straight one that usually comes off of the standard gas tank that comes with the kit that I didn't use. But, uh, you know, I... That's just, you know, standard gas line that you would use, um, I think, even for, like, a, uh, you know, a mower or a weed eater or something like that. So you can match up the diameter pretty easily just by going to, like, Home Depot or, or like, AutoZone or something if you need some extra line. But it's pretty simple. You just, uh, you know, plug and play that and then cut it to length. And I like to just use a little bit of zip ties just to, you know, zip time, um, give it a little bit of extra mechanical bond. And then all the lines themselves, whether or not it's the brake lines or, you know, the accelerator uh, cable um, or also the uh, shut off uh, electrical line, you know, I just you kind of zip tie those together and then zip tie them to uh, the frame of the bike somewhere. You want to, you know, kind of move the front tire around to make sure that there's enough room for, so they don't bind or, you know, get torn apart or something like that. But just put them where you want to and um, zip tie them together and it looks fine. So we're getting closer now. Um, I already put in, I think I already put in the oil on the bottom and uh, that just takes like standard regular 10W30 or whatever. Um, and then filling up some gas in the tank and I think we're getting pretty close to starting the engine soon. Alright, I really like this. This is a, a double cable pool. So it's you know designed so you can have one hand operate both the front and the back brakes at the same time. And I got this off of Amazon. I think it was like six or seven bucks. 
um, and I, I really like it. It's much more quality, um, surprisingly, than what comes with uh, you know the kits when you you know would buy uh, some extra cable or something like that. You get like a little metal, you know, the kind of a chrome polished uh, handle brake uh, handles, and those are kind of cheapy. This thing is um, built much more solid, and I like the fact that on one hand. You can operate both the front and the back brakes at the same time. So pretty straightforward. You know, what you do is you just take that, that metal cable and you put it through the little pulley system there where the holes are and then thread it through the, the black sheath there that goes all the way to the front or to the back um, you know, brake system, depending on which one you're hooking up at any given time. And then you might recall if you've been following this build that I actually completely fabricated um, this front disc brake system. The, this bike did not have at all uh, any connections whatsoever. So all that was completely fabricated and then, um, you know, welded and then bolted on into place. Took a little bit to, you know, figure out exactly how that was going to work, but I like it a lot. And most of the braking power on anything, cars, trucks, boats, motorcycles, not boats, but are most of the braking power is in the front. So I wanted to put that disc brake on the front of this one because I did have other builds where I had the pincer style uh, brakes, hand brakes on the front, and those those got trashed in no time. I mean, just because you know, you're going 25 miles an hour on these motorized bikes and it takes a lot more energy. They're also heavier. Um, so it takes a lot more energy for them to stop. So I wanted to experiment and have those disc brakes on the front. So that was pretty cool. Check out that video. It was early on. I think it was, I don't know, video four or five, something like that, where we I fabricated the uh, bracket and everything for those, those front disc brakes. All right, what kind of video would this be if we didn't have the grinder in it? So um, I wanna, wanted to put this back fender on there, but because this bike has two chains, uh, the one being on the right-hand side, which had the clearance, and then this new chain um, for the drive chain, I, you, know, you gotta cut off a little bit of the fender, um, otherwise it'll, it'll just grind on there, it'll be annoying. So uh, that was the purpose of that, and then I'm just applying some old, uh, you know, pincer uh, style brakes on the back here. This bike actually didn't have any um, uh, when I found it on the side of the road. It had a little coaster brake, you know, which is the kind where you push your pedal backwards. But I don't like keeping the coaster brakes in here for these motorized bikes because they can bind up. So, you know, if you're driving down the road, it it's rare, but especially if you're going, you know, 20, 25 miles an hour over a bump, it, the little teeny tiny brakes for the coaster brake system, they can jam and bind up, and then your your tires locked. And if you're going that fast, could be a safety issue or what have you, but it's for sure going to be a pain in the butt because it could actually really bind inside the back drum. So I did the disc on the front. And then on the back, I did the pincers. So, you know, running the cable uh, to the back brakes is, you know, real similar to running the cable on the front. It's just longer. Um, 
but you can see I'm using that same uh, you know double-sided brake system which is really really nice again if I if I didn't say it earlier you know get one of those because it's it's worth its weight in gold and in my opinion it's actually better quality too so um, I'm not gonna go really in depth about how to put these cables on but it's a little bit of trial and error just to summarize you put the cable back in there it's got a little stop and then the metal part of the cable sticks in further and um, just gets held in place with um, you know with this with a screw or a nut back in there and then you just got to adjust it you know every you know just a little bit of trial and error pull it and you know see if it's close enough if it's not you readjust it and pull the cable a little bit tighter that kind of thing so you can see there in operation you know on the one hand it's perfect you got you know both the front and the back brakes working at the same time and check it out see how they're actually squeezing the front and the back at the same time that's perfect I like that a lot all right so this front fender um, I had to put it a little farther forward um, because of the clearance issue uh, with the um, with the muffler you can kind of see it's like a blue haze where I heated it up and bent it a little bit so that's why that front fender is a little bit forward So here it is, just going to go around it and uh, kind of highlight some of the stuff on this custom build. I mean, again, this thing was found on the side of the road. It was a little old Huffy, built that front light, custom built the gas tank, completely did, you know, uh, you know paint job and body work on, on the bicycle. And the bike was actually a girl's bike, so we relocated the top the one of the rails from the girl's bike to the to a top rail. Um, did a custom brake job, uh, fabricated the brake system for the disc brakes in the front, installed uh, the engine itself, relocated the seat to hang back, built a support system from it from an old chisel. That was kind of cool. There's a video on that, and um, I mean. Look at that, that, that carbide light. That is a custom made in carbide inspired light on there. Super cool. There's another video on, uh, on that in the series as well. And like I said in the earlier parts of the video, my wife made that, um, that brown leather. There's the dual brake system. There's the front calipers with the disc brake system. It turned out really nice. There's the bluing. I had to bend that the um, muffler, the pipe a little bit, just because it, it was sticking out too far. Lots of adjustment and um, you know, custom holes put in there to put that mounting plate in. That um, stand right there, that kickstand, was about 15 bucks or so off of Amazon, but well worth it. There's the gas tank. I think that really sets off the whole bike, and. If you remember, there is the custom storage compartment in the gas tank, and we 3D printed the little latch um, that goes on it just to give it a little bit, you know, a little bit of security for it bouncing around. And there's the engine itself. It's four-stroke, 49cc. 
there's that back piston or uh, what was that pneumatic chisel that we used to uh, support that back seat. That was kind of cool. I'm glad that we used that. That was fun. And then back pincer brakes to give it a little bit more stopping power. Just pirated it off of that, off of some 10 speed, I think. There's the chain and the tensioner. And this is an automatic, so there's like a clutch system in there. You know, the, the more gas you give it, the more pressure it'll um, go in and out on the clutch and then, you know, send you down the road. But you can stay idle, um, just, you know, in place with the brakes on or even probably just like your legs down just to hold it. So, other side of the gas tank, my wife and daughter made the Cleveland sign on their Cricut uh, machine. And then there's the uh, filler part that's just, uh, you know, three quarter inch uh, cap from the plumbing department of Home Depot. There's the pet cock. filter I like that look if you recall from the previous look, uh, videos I took that red sheath off of this side of the bike so it does have some moving parts in there but I think it's completely worth it and it's not overheating or anything like that and then uh, one of the little other custom touches was this badge I put on the front and that's just the top of a spoon I got a friend that sends me like some silverware and stuff like that I tinker with and that was the top of one of the larger Thank you.